Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Justin Murigliani. Uh First of all, thank you everybody for all the support, all of the questions that have been coming in about the storm. Uh, it's really great that the likes on the page and the follows have gone up a lot over the last two days. And uh, of course we could attribute that to uh, what we're looking at here coming up. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick idea, especially for folks who are new and don't know how this whole thing works. And this is very simplified, but I want to give you an idea of what, what we're trying to, to forecast here. Um, what you're looking at is I just created this. I kind of piggybacked off a couple of things I saw on the Internet to kind of explain how precipitation type works. And the bottom line is this. If it's below 32, all the way aloft, all the way to the ground, you get snow. It stays frozen. It's below 32 from the upper atmosphere straight down to the surface. And then you're going to wind up with snow at the surface. Now, everything, even in the summertime, rain starts as snow. It's frozen up in the upper atmosphere. Now, sometimes what can happen is the snow begins to fall and it encounters a warm layer. We call this the about the uh, 850 uh, millibar range. And that's about 5,500 feet above the surface. When a snowflake falls through warm air and melts at that part of the atmosphere, what happens is it can refreeze if there's below 32 degree air below that, but it can never ever reform into a snowflake. It's impossible. It will freeze into really a ball of ice. And that's what sleet is. Sleet is not hail. A lot of people think that hail and sleet, they use them interchangeably. It's, it's not. Hail is a phenomenon that happens in the uh, summertime when you have thunderstorms and you have really strong updrafts. We won't get into all of that. But it, that cause, that's, that's when you would talk about hail. In the wintertime, when you're talking about a snowflake that melts at 5,500 feet or so and then refreezes before it hits the ground, we call that sleet. The most dangerous one is the next one that's freezing rain. And in this case, what happens is the layer of warm air, the air that's above 32 degrees, is much thicker. It's going from... 5,500 feet, but it's going down even further, even further, and then it gets down to really almost the surface, but at the surface, it's below 32 degrees, and that's when you get the most dangerous part of a storm, freezing rain, because what happens is that rain droplet will fall, whatever it hits, it's going to freeze, and then as more droplets come down, more rain comes down, it freezes again, makes another layer, and you get layer after layer after layer, and that's when you have what would be an ice storm. It's very difficult to get an ice storm, especially in our area, uh, because we have the ocean to our east. And a lot of times when warm air comes in from the ocean, it warms up the entire atmosphere above freezing. So even at the surface, it's, it gets scoured out. If that happens, if warm air comes in and it's, uh, we got a snowflake, it comes down, it melts, and then there's above 32 degrees all the way to the surface, then you have rain, just plain rain. Um, it is a very difficult call here because we have a ton of cold air that is just to our north and west. In fact, if you look at some of your you know, weather bug or the weather channels app, it's going to show you that the temperatures are going to be, let's say, 47 or whatever it's showing on each one's different. And then the low is four or seven or something like that, single digits. So that cold air is not that far away. It's very hard for models to really hone in on where that cold air is going to be. The more south and east this storm is from our coast, the more frozen precipitation we're going to get. I really don't think it's going to warm up into the 50s. I just don't. I think that there's going to be cold air uh, at the surface, and that's going to cause freezing rain. What I'm really kind of torn on is, uh, you know, how much snow do we get? I think maybe on Friday we get one to two inches Thursday night into Friday. The more snow we get on uh, Friday Friday and Thursday night, the more snow that we get to lay down there, that's going to help set up a boundary that could enhance cold air to stick around longer. We call it the cold air damming. Cold air comes down from the north and it's on the, uh, it hits the mountains to our west and just kind of comes straight down. 
And when that happens, we call it cold air damming. There's a lot more to it than this, but I just trying to give you the layman's idea of how it works. That cold air really is hard to scour out. It's difficult for warm air to push it out. So um, m my gut feeling on this storm is on Saturday that we're going to see snow. It's going to transition to sleet. And then I think it's going to go to a prolonged period of freezing rain right at I-95. Now, if I'm wrong, it'll be just west of I-95, just north and west. But I believe 95 Carter is in it. It's going to be freezing rain for a period of time. I do think that we'll change over to rain for some part of the storm after the freezing rain. But then there will be a switch back over to snow. And I really don't think when it switches over that it's going to change back to freezing rain and then snow. What I think is going to happen is we'll get a brief burst of sleet and then it will go right to snow. I think the entire column is going to be frozen when that really arctic cold air rushes in uh i i can't give you a forecast yet i can't tell you how much snow how much ice but i do believe that somebody in this area is going to see a crippling ice storm it's going to be a very bad one it's going to uh, cause power outages uh that could last days because right after that really very cold air comes in so anything that that freezes is going to stay frozen it's not going to melt it's going to be hard for crews to get out there and put uh, power lines back up and trees that come down. Are, it's going to be hard to move those. They're going to be encased in ice. Uh, a, a crippling ice storm is about 0.25 inches of ice. That's considered crippling. Some of the models want to produce almost two inches of ice. Not 0.25, two, 0.0. That's... In this area, I don't know if we've ever seen that before. I think the most that I could recall was 1994. And if memory serves, it was probably about three quarters of an inch. So you're talking about two inches of ice. That's unbelievable. Um, it doesn't happen often. So we just have to watch it. we got to see what these models do. You're going to hear rumors about everything. Some people say, hey, it's over. We're just going to get plain rain. Because the GFS just came out and it's got temperatures soaring into the 50s. But you got to look and see what the other models are doing too. What's the Euro doing? Well, the Euro is trending colder. What's the Yuki doing? Trending colder. What's the NAM doing? Trending colder. So not only do you have to look at the models, but you have to ask yourself, what I see on the models, is it meteorologically possible or probable? Is this likely? Is this model onto something or is it struggling? And that's the dilemma. I think we're moving into a colder situation. I think at this point, if you're in Philadelphia, North and West, your hope is that it trends colder so it becomes more of a snowstorm and less of a freezing rainstorm. I think that we're less likely to have it warm up and become all rain. I just don't think that's gonna happen. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I'm not saying that the GFS is absolutely wrong because it's possible, but meteorologically and with the other models going the other way, it seems unlikely that this is going to be a straight rainstorm with flooding. Whatever happens, no matter what falls and what form, by the end of it, when that cold air comes rushing in, we're going to have a flash freeze. That's virtually a lock. I don't see any way out of that. We're going to have a flash freeze. Any ponding water water on roads the only hope is that if wind kicks in and can dry the roads before the really cold air comes in maybe it'll be dry before but i doubt it it's probably going to be wet roads that turn into black ice real real quick all right so i'll have more updates as we go along there's more model runs coming and uh thanks so much for following i really appreciate it um i know it's scary i know it's not a great thing to have happen with uh, especially with ice but um we'll get through it well we've gotten through Hurricane Sandy and other terrible storms. So we'll be all right. Thanks, everybody.